Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Double R Restorations. My name is Russell, and on this video, I'm going to be demonstrating the wiring hookups on 1970 through 81 Camaro wiper switches, at least the ones that I have here in the garage. We're going to look at the pinouts of those switches. We're going to hook them up to a hidden wiper motor and test the operation of them right here on the workbench. If this is your first time visiting the channel, I want to invite you to subscribe and check out the playlist on my 1972 Camaro that I call Project Overkill. With that being said, I hope you enjoy the video. In this video, I thought we would go through the different wiper switches used in the 70 to 81 Camaros and we would test them using an early style motor. This is a 70 to 73 style motor. However, pretty sure that uh, both motors are pretty much the same and these switches will work in the same configuration if you have the later style. You notice here on the 70 to 73 style that the terminals are down here on the bottom and on the 74 and up style they're kind of up here and uh, you also want to check your washer pump because those are different as well because of the cutouts for the terminals but in this video we're going to be testing the 70 to 73 style also I want you to look here at the way that I have the motor wired we're not going to change anything on the wiring of the motor we're just going to be changing these uh, alligator clips here. So on the uh, center pin, that's our power coming in. I'm using a 12 volt at 6 amp battery charger. And basically, I'm working off of a metal tabletop here, so I'm having to be pretty careful. But I've got uh, my positive isolated here. And basically it's connected to a wire that feeds into the center pin. Also you'll notice on our little brass tab there that I've got the negative part of our battery charger tied to that. That would simulate the uh, ground through the firewall. Okay, the way I understand this motor to work is you have power that comes in on the center pin. And then these two outer pins are your speed selections. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm calling this the low pin and the high pin. But the way that it works is when this green and this yellow are both grounded, that will actually put the motor in low speed. Now, once you switch it to high speed, this pin here is only grounded. And then the switch to go to off position, you've got to go back to low speed. So these two pins would be grounded again. That would be low speed. And then when this pin gets grounded, it will cause the uh, motor to park. This is the park switch. I'm going to put a link in the description below to a fella here on YouTube. His name is Chris Craft. He's working on a Chevelle. He's got an excellent video on the way that these motors work. And he also goes into the washer pump as well. Now for the remainder of this video, we're not going to be messing with any of these connections. All of this is going to stay the same. I do have a little schematic here. And for all practical purposes, and for my drawings, I'm calling this top terminal low. And I'll have a green wire connected to it. The centers, like I said, they're 12 volts. This bottom one, I'm calling it high, and I'll have a yellow wire connected to it. I've also got an extra ground here from the case of the motor, and it's black. So these are the three wires we're going to be dealing with. I'm working on the washer pumps right now, so we'll, we'll do a separate video on washer pumps. But there is also a blue wire here on the bench which will be our washer pump when we get ready. And the power from the washer pump just picks tails off of the power for the wiper motor. So the different switches we're gonna be going over today is a 127 switch, 
which to my knowledge is a hidden wiper switch a 147 switch which is also a hidden wiper switch a 148 switch which is a standard wiper switch and you'll notice like I pointed out in my previous video the 147 and 148 look identical a 98 switch which is a standard wiper switch a 176 switch which is a standard wiper switch and a 549 switch complete part number is 1402-9549 so for the rest of this video we'll call it a 549 switch and to my knowledge it is listed as a standard wiper switch however that is the actual switch that I pulled out of my 81 Camaro that had a hidden wiper system on it now the cars you know over 30 years old and it could have been changed at some point but the, it will work the motor and uh, you're going to see it all right here on camera okay guys so I lost some footage from the other day or I just forgot to hit the record button I don't know which the first switch up is a 127 switch to the best of my knowledge it is a hidden wiper switch on these switches basically you run a ground into the terminal and basically that's all you're doing is is switching the ground you're grounding certain pins at each setting that's all we're switching no voltages just the ground side of the circuit only and the way this switch works basically in the off position I have continuity between terminals 2 and 4 in the low position I have continuity between terminals 1, 2, and 4. In the high position, I have continuity between terminals 1 and 4. And then in the washer on the low speed, basically all the pins, all the terminals, 1, 2, 3, and 4 have continuity. And in the high setting, it's 1, 3, and 4. The hookup's going to be number 1 is green, number 2 is yellow, number 3 is our washer. And number four is going to be our ground. So on the hookup, I've got one is green, two is yellow, three is a washer, four is the black, our ground. So we're in the off position. We go to low. Switch to high. Back to low. And then when we go to off, it should part. That's your 127 switch. I noticed a pattern in the early years of these switches. It seemed like that the, uh, basically the, the ones ending in seven were hidden wipers. Like you've got 97, 127, 147. Those are all hidden wipers. And the 98, and I guess there's a 128, I'm not sure about that, but I know the 148, those are standard wipers. Now this particular switch here is our next one. This is a 147 switch. This is the one in the previous video that you guys had, y'all saw me holding it a certain way because I had it apart. I have rebuilt that switch now and it works just as good as when it was new cleaned I did clean the terminals and you can see what a difference just a little bit of cleaning makes versus the old 127 that just like I took it out of the car versus this 147 that's been cleaned this 147 is a Hidden wiper switch, it's basically the same pin out as our 127. However, it looks identical to its cousin, the 148. So our 147, I've got the terminals labeled the same as one, two, three, and four. And you'll notice here on my diagram that we have continuity in the off position on terminals two and four, the low, position is 1, 2, and 4. 
the high position is one and four. The washer in the low setting is one, two, three, and four. The high setting is one, three, and four. The hookup is number one is our green. Number two terminals are yellow. Three would be our washer. Four would be our ground. Identical to the 127 switch. 147 switch. We're in the off position. We switch it on. It puts the motor in low speed. We go to the next setting which is our high speed. Back to low speed. And then off. Alright guys, the 148 switch, the cousin to the 147. It's the pin out, the way this switch operates when it's selected to low and high that makes it different. Again, we got our terminals 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can see there are continuity on the off, it's terminals 1 and 2 have continuity. Low, it's 1, 2, and 4. High, it's 2 and 4. The washer is all of them in the low speed and then it's 2, 3, and 4 in the high speed. So we're going to hook up. One is yellow. Two will be our black ground. Three will be our washer. And four will be our green. So that's the hookup right there. Now, we're in off position. Turn the switch on, we automatically go to low speed. Go to high speed. Back to low speed. And this should park the motor off. There you go. Now there is something that I want to caution you on on this switch. This fourth pin We tied it to one of the motor windings. We tied it to our low speed, our green. This fourth pin does have continuity arm right there that comes out that your knob mounts to. What I did discover in using this 148 switch Normally this would be the actual ground and what I did discover is if you were actually grounded and you say you were turning this off, you could actually get shocked just a little bit because basically this is tied to one of the motor windings. So you could actually, if you were grounded, you could actually just get a little jolt. It's DC, it's not enough to hurt you, but it is enough to make you jump. Um, I don't know why that is tied there, but, uh, it's weird. However, I think the fix for it is to remove, if you're going to use this switch in that configuration, I would remove the knob. The best way that I have found to do that is, uh, through some rubber jaws in a vise and then just pull the, pull the knob off. It's, it's it will come off with a little bit of force and then I believe you could take some heat shrink and just put over this part and shrink it down that would isolate that pin and that way you wouldn't get just a little bit of a shock if you're not grounded it it won't shock you but but if you just if you happen to be grounded I had this uh, at first I had this motor laying on this metal table and I, I was sitting here with my arms on it. And I went to flip it off. And as soon as I did, it lit me up. But uh, like I said, it's just enough to make you jerk away from it. It's not enough to really hurt you. It's just something I want you to be aware of. And uh, if I was going to use this switch in that configuration, I, I think I would put the heat shrink in. You still got to be careful because your washer has to go in. But you've got a pretty good gap there, so I think you could uh, put some heat shrink in there and I believe it would work. That's the 148 switch. Okay guys, the 098 switch. This is a uh, standard switch here, 098. 
you can see it just has three terminals on it on the back there's a couple different ways you can hook this one up so on the PDF that Brent wrote I'll put a link in the description below over at nastyz28.com this switch will work however it may need to be modified and what I mean by that is actually taking everything apart by the tabs and flipping it around the right way and uh, that way it would work like it's supposed to in the car the way that I wire it to get it to work it operates from uh, basically right to left also the way that this works the washer function will still work but it would be it would be different and I'll show you that so the first way I'm going to wire this 98 switch up you can see pins 1 and 2 have continuity in the off position 1, 2 and 4 have continuity in low and then 2 and 4 have continuity in high and then it's uh, low is 1, 2, 3 and 4 now the hookup number 1 of course it's green, two is yellow, three is the washer, four is the ground, and what I'm calling number four is actually the case. So this is one, two, three, and four. So this is the hookup on it. Now you'll notice the off position is actually going to be the in high. If you mounted this in the car like it is right now, basically it would be off. You would switch it to the middle position which would be low. What would normally be off is high speed. Also your washer function would be messed up because in the high speed if you pressed washer it would go back to uh, low and then in the off position you would have no washer. Now on that PDF you could actually take this apart you could bend these tabs and then you could uh, rotate this switch basically 180 and um, that would kind of make it look like it was right in the car basically it would be like this in the car the washer still going to be kind of off because it's, this is the off position normally that would go to low when you press the washer but it would be low speed and high speed. You would just have to flip this bracket around where it would operate the car. So I guess if this is the only switch you have, I mean, you could make it work. There is one other way of connecting this switch. I didn't really write it down as far as in my main notes. Like I said, I don't recommend this way, but I will show it to you on the video here. Basically, I've got one tied to my yellow lead, two tied to the ground, and then this is normally grounded in the car. You wouldn't be able to ground this in the car because I've tied it to the green lead, which is tied to one of the motor windings. This is the way it would be mounted, and this switch would work perfectly. There's low. high, low, and off. The only reason I don't really recommend this is because, again, it goes back to uh, what I was talking about on the 148 switch, about this actually being tied to that fourth pin. But on this, you've got that whole area. So I guess if you wanted to uh, take uh, electrical tape, or heat shrink or something and just put over this whole plate to isolate it from this connection it would work so if you if this is the only switch you had that would be an option like I said I don't really recommend that because it's just like I said if I touch this and and this while I'm switching it it would shock me just a little bit if I touch the uh, actual ground 
and this plate here because it's actually tied to one of the motor windings. Just something I wanted to point out. You can see here in my notes, basically one is yellow, two is black, three is a washer, and four would be the green. Four being the metal, metal house in the metal case. And you can see on my notes, works correctly, but will shock you. <laughs> Next up is going to be the 176 switch. And this switch would be used in a different style bezel. Again, I might be a little wrong on these numbers, but I think it's, uh, I'm not sure about 74. I think it may be 75 and up to 78, I believe. I believe that's right. It may be a 74 as well. It's, um, it is listed there on Nasty Z. But um, you can see you got a little bit different pinout on the back. And I'm basically calling this Terminal 1, 2, 3, and 4. These 176 switches are pretty common. And you can use them in the 70 to 73, but it does require the different bezel. So on the hookup, the way this switch works when it's in off position is 2 and 4 terminals have continuity. The low, it's 1, 2, and 4. The high, it's 1 and 4. The washer selection on low, it's basically all terminals, 1 through 4. And on the high selection, it's 1, 3, and 4. I'm hooking it up as uh, terminal 1 is green, terminal 2 is yellow, 3 is our washer pump, 4 is our ground. There's the hookup. So right now we're off. Go to low speed. High speed. Low speed, off. So that's your 176 switch. Next up is our 549 switch. Again, this came out of my personal 81 Camaro. And uh, I had it, so I thought we'd just include it in the video. So on our 549 switch, in the off position, terminals 2 and 4 have continuity. Low position, it's 1, 2, and 4. High position, it's 1 and 4. The washer on low is all terminals 1, 2, 3, and 4. And on the high, it's 1, 3, and 4. I'm hooking this up as terminal 1 is my green, terminal 2 is my yellow, 3 is my washer pump, 4 is my ground. There's the hookup. Everything except for our washer pump. Got our off selection. Low speed. High speed. Back to low speed. And off. So guys, I'm also going to include a really good schematic of the 148 switch and the 176 switch that uh, Mark Fastercat drew up. I asked him for permission to use those in this video and he gave it to me so I'm going to be including those. Uh, we was able to, uh, through this process, figure out the uh, switches that he had and the way that uh, we needed to wire them. Also, this is going to help me determine what switch to use on the 72 as well as the uh, 81 Camaro. And I hope it helps you get your wipers working on your second gen Camaro as well. 
Don't forget to uh, like and share the video. Also subscribe if you hadn't. When I have a little bit more progress, I'll be back online. Thank you guys.